Bunyet. Bunyet, tu me laisses filmer le podcast Hein Tu me laisses filmer le podcast, mon chat Oui. Hein, c'est ma chaise, ça. Hello and welcome to the second episode of the Fidias podcast. My name is Sylvie and I am a French expat living in the United Kingdom. I live in York in the northern of England and um, I've decided to do a podcast about last month and uh, first of all I would like to thank everybody for uh, viewing my pod, watching my podcast, commenting, liking, subscribing. The uh, response to this first episode was absolutely amazing. Uh, I couldn't be happier about how you reacted to it. It's been absolutely amazing. So I'm very much looking forward to see how this episode goes and uh, to do more and share with you my little uh, crafting adventures. Um, I do some hand dyeing uh, on the side of a uh, busy day job life and everything, but that is not the point of this. Uh, my yarn brand is called Phileas Yarns, uh, hence the name Phileas Podcast. Didn't go uh, too far to look for a name. And um, whereas the first episode uh, was very light in terms of uh, hand dyed yarn, uh, especially my hand dyed yarn because it was revolving around the travel and I didn't have any really, today I'm gonna make up for it. There's gonna be a lot of it. It's gonna be me, 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 me. <laughs> so I apologize uh, for that. It's uh, a bit of self-promoting, but it's it's just been what I've been working on, uh, work yeah, working with on many projects lately. So uh, I had to share them. And to be fair, there's been a couple of people who've been asking me if I was going to talk about it. So here we go. It's going to be a very much Phileas yarn heavy um, content. Um, you can find me on various social media, especially Instagram and also on Ravelry. Uh, I'll put the links to those uh, on, in the comment box below this video. And I'll also put a link to the shop. Uh, I mean, to be honest, it'll be uh, to go with like uh, the projects. When I talked about the projects, I'll link to uh, the shop. So you can find the yarn if you like it. I am going to put some timestamps uh, at the top of the comment box or uh, notes uh, box uh, below this video so that you can jump from uh, one section to the next if you're not interested and uh, or you know pause at the end of a section and you know where you are when you want to watch the rest of it and still uh, it's still a learning curve in terms of uh, talking to the camera and trying to uh, be as concise as possible uh, but you know it, it is a work in progress so uh, bear with me it's, it's going to be difficult in the first few episodes to, to try to be uh, short and to the point. Today's episode is uh, brought to you by the magic of editing. Uh, I have done one section a couple of weeks ago and then I've sewn the sewing section uh, yesterday and then I took my camera and filmed bits and bobs on the road uh, the past few weeks. So uh, so yeah, there's a lot, a lot of work for me to do on the uh, editing side. Uh, but obviously, uh, hopefully I will get there um, eventually. And uh, yeah, so there'll be different outfits, different hairdo because I went to the hairdresser yesterday after I filmed the sewing bit. So it probably looks so much shorter, especially when I turn on the side. Anyway, I said I needed to get to the point. So here we are. Let's start with some finished objects. And the first one will be uh, the one that I filmed two weeks ago uh, because I needed to send them uh, to the post. So I filmed about it before I did that to share the thing with you. 
see you very much after then. I just wanted to present you with the two small projects I finished. Uh, these are presents for my nephew, so they will be posted out tomorrow. Uh, so I thought I'd just pop by to record quickly a little, uh, a little sequence about them. Uh, I've made a couple of hats based on the anthology pattern by Tin Can Nets. Uh, this is a recipe for uh, Fair Isle hats. Um, but I mean, it's just a recipe for hats. That you don't actually have to do some fair isle. It's it's nice. It's got the instruction for you to include fair isle in there, but you don't have to. So I've used that and not done fair isle. I actually did some uh, color blocks or uh, stripes. Um, this pattern is free on Ravelry as a single pattern, or you can find it in the Strange Brew book which is all about uh, fair isle knitting and lots of sweaters and, and accessories with a fair isle in them. So I've made two hats for my nephews as I said. Um, the first one is for my nephew Axel whose birthday is uh, well today as I record this little section but we've got history in my family when we don't send each other's present at the right time to be quite honest I've got my Christmas present from my sister about two three weeks ago sometime in uh, in like early May Christmas it was really a Christmas present I had like a card with like penguins and little Christmas trees on it yes never mind that so I'm only what 10 days late by the time this arrives it'll be fine it'll be fine so Birthday boy, got this little hat. This is an adult size, small, medium. Um, Axel is eight. I don't know what, the, what what it is. We're growing up in the tropical island. They live in Reunion Island, which is in the o Indian Ocean, kind of roughly between Madagascar and Mauritius. Well, really close to Mauritius than Madagascar, but that area. But uh, well, so I don't know what it is we're growing up over there, but they, they they are quite big boys, but you know, they like living, it's fine. But yes, yeah, so when I ask my sister the sizes to buy, you know, t-shirts and things like that, it's, it's just, it's just, what, what is this? What do you fit them? <laughs> what do you fit your kids with? So, uh, so yeah, so I gave up knitting sweaters for these kids. Uh-uh. Hats, hats it is, couple of days, done. So this is a size small medium, as I said. Uh, I have used both hats. I have used my own hand dyed yarn. I use leftovers of this. Um, this is Phileas Yarns Wanderlust DK, which is 100% British Blue Fest Leicester. And here the colorways are Kerala, Fjord, and La Cabana Sucre. So, and I've done some color blocks with just a couple of one row stripes to, to transition from one color to the next. So, it's really, it was really, you know, zero brain kind of thing. Uh, and yes, the second hat up without the join at the back is this one. And Maybe this one. This is for my older nephew who's 12, I think. Uh, this is Ian's fur, uh, hat. And this is an adult large. Yes, adult large. So you see why I don't make sweaters anymore. I mean, last time I did a sweater for um, Ian, who's, I think he was turning 10. And. Um, and I had to make a size that was that I could wear. Actually, I could have worn that sweater because it, it was like my size. It was ridiculous. Anyway, so this one I've done like some uh, stripes and I've used the colors Bedouin, which is this bright royal blue here. The colors are a little bit blue and it's very bright uh, light from the window. Um, behind the camera so just uh, across from me uh, so it is a little bit more um, slightly darker a bit more uh, 
intense color in real life but anyway this is between the navy blue strum in the middle is among friends and the red is the larna uh, i chose this color combination around bedouin because ian loves uh bright blues bright deep blues so uh that's why i choose bedouin as the main color and as i finished the hat i realized this was very much a spider-man kind of <laughs> inspired choice of colors which is very funny because Ian used to absolutely love Spider-Man when he was a kid like like really kitty kitty like four but when he couldn't talk properly so Spider-Man became Pister Man absolutely which absolutely made us laugh so much uh and I kind of stayed in the family so I'm quite I'm quite you know I think it's quite funny that after all these years kind of like came back in the loop this whole spider-man kind of thing it just you know the blue stuck <laughs> so yeah so these will go um tomorrow towards reunion island which um some of you might have taken that I said it was in the Indian Ocean, so you think tropical island. Uh, Reunion Island is um, loads of mountains, it's got a volcano and everything, so it's not, there are some beaches which are absolutely lovely, but it's not, it's not your tropical, um, you know, it's not the Maldives or it's not the Seychelles, it's, you know, you go there to hike basically and uh, and you've got this, so you've got very high mountains. Uh, in Reunion Island, my sister and her family live in um, quite high up in altitude. So yes, it actually can get quite chilly uh, in the mornings or uh, in the evenings in their winter. So in those two weeks since I've posted this uh, little hat, they have arrived to uh, their destination and I can report that. They are worn and very well loved. Uh, I'm posting these pictures of my nephews with the authorization from my sister. Uh, oops, sorry, the reflection here. There you go. The two little munchkins, well, not so little munchkins, uh, wearing their hats. And you can see the terrible thing that is the tropical winter. I mean, yeah. I'm going to talk to you about what I'm wearing now, might as well, and this is the Odyssey shawl by Rory Locatelli. I'm going to put it back. The Odyssey shawl for Rory Locatelli. Ah! right there let me pull an actual picture here it is a free pattern on Ravelry uh, I think she released this pattern she made this pattern as a give back to the community uh, the knitting community who have been supporting her uh, in her designing career so it's a lovely shawl and in it it is knitted in DK in double net uh, in three different colors um, I believe the uh, she chose to yes to do this in a merino DK. I have used my hand dyed yarn, uh, so this is Wanderlust DK as per the little hats I've just showed you. Um, I have used so three of my colors. I kind of stayed in the in the sort of uh, color scheme that she was using. So and this is exactly what I've got left of the shawl I've used this is Tamagroot we've got Acropolis here and this is Quai de Seine um, I have started this uh, project at uh, when I was vending uh, exhibiting at the festival Le Fil de la Manche in Normandy in late April um, Yes, I had, uh, I, I, I don't know, I, did, I didn't, um, you know, calculating that I would finish the my then whip uh, that quick. So I found myself on the second day of the event uh, with no knitting 
to do on the show i always like you know sometimes i don't have the time but i still like to have a work in progress on the needle it's like a on the go um yarn uh, sh um, show sample or shop sample so uh so i i, I wasn't too sure what i wanted to do but something a bit not too difficult so i've decided to start on this shawl obviously i had all the requirements for yarn on me uh, i just needed uh, to dash to um a stall that was knitting uh, notions and needles because i didn't have all my uh interchangeable set so i needed a needle so i just run to uh the stall that lily come to um when um on like even before the sunday uh um marketplace open just to get my needle i could cast on so it's very very much an emergency um knitting a situation so anyway so this show this is a, a so a dk weight and um this is knitting in five millimeters um there's not much to talk about it uh really it's pretty much straightforward the pattern is well written uh the um, sort of scallop I'm sorry, little scallop um wave pattern at the uh, each section is is well explained and it's just you need to focus when you make the the sort of big yarn over thingy uh the make hole as it's called on the um, on the pattern uh just pay attention and then after that uh it's fine um it's uh, it's okay um the pattern has a pico edge i i am not a big fan of pico edging so uh, i've just decided to uh knit another row or purl another did i knit another row yes i need another row so i will be back to cast off uh as a stretchy cast off basic stretchy cast off on the right side because i think you need to pick a edge on the uh, wrong side so yeah i just did a just did a normal cast off instead of a pico edge but and then blocking it it's just you know does these little waves there and it is very cozy i got to wear it a couple of times uh especially last week when the weather was horrible here but uh but yes yeah, so it's uh it's good i like it the odyssey shawl let me give you a last i can just see it <laughs> oh just one thing obviously because i've used the blue fest luster uh as i'm going to probably mention it again uh later on uh the yarn the blue fest luster blooms a lot less than uh, the merino so um the picture on the pattern look as it's much wider but that will be because uh merino tends to stretch a lot more and bloom a lot more than the blue fest lester uh does but it is still it is still very wearable i have no problem with that i'm definitely happy with my choice there last finished object that i can present you today is this cardigan here here we are this is the uh, Ramona light cardigan by Elizabeth Smith who is also known as the brown stitch uh, this is the front of the uh, pattern uh, so yeah it's a it's a very much straight forward and straight cardigan there's no shaping whatsoever um, it, so yes i've basically <laughs> i decided i wanted to knit this cardigan thinking oh it's it's sticky i mean it's supposed to be in sport weight uh the original ramana cardigan is uh, in worsted the light version it should be in, in um sport weight but i've made gauge using the new lanark dk uh, that is the yarn that i used and um and i thought oh this is good this is just going to be straightforward stuck in a stitch in dk it's fine it'll, it'll fly off the needle except that the new lanark yarn that i've used came off a cone it still had the spinning oil on it 
it was very very tough to knit with it was not flying off the needle whatsoever um yeah it's uh, yes i should have uh, should have maybe skinned it and trying to wash the yarn and get rid of the spinning all before um before anything else but um but yes so i actually still have quite a bit left I might actually do that, actually putting in the skin and trying to wash it uh, so that whenever I do something with it next it'll uh, it'll be uh it'll be okay to knit with. But eventually we got there. Uh it is it, it is very straightforward. It's it's a raglan raglan cardigan. There's no shaping except on the sleeve, obviously the you know uh the decreases on the sleeve. Uh the body uh is straight there's some broken ribbing uh everywhere there is ribbing even on the bottom bands uh i've put some uh oh let me show you the yarn a little bit closer because it's actually quite lovely it's the tiger colorway from new lawn arc so it's the dicky version and it's a uh, 90 percent wool and 10 percent silk i think they call it their uh donegal silk Thingy. obviously this is a code so i do not have the label for it um but i've put a link to uh the actual uh yarn and color page uh down below and you can see so obviously it's mostly this beige and and red but there's some flicks of um blue and periwinkle and it's it's actually very subtle and very nice uh I've made this to wear as a basic in the autumn and winter that I could wear, uh, you know, uh, dressed down with a pair of jeans and a t-shirt, but I could also wear it at work uh, if I have some uh, plain uh, dress or um, top and skirt combination. Um, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to put it on to show you what it's like. So, yeah, the other reason that I think it's going to be very much uh, a winter autumn wear hi people is that no that's too high there we are is that it's because it's got no shaping there's a lot of room actually here for me but it's not too bad because i mean as you probably i don't know if you already know i've already mentioned it or i will many times in the future i do like uh boxy and drop sleeve things uh even in, in tops and t-shirts so i reckon that come the winter i have some long sleeve version of uh, a t-shirt and tops or even short sleeve ones so this this will be a nice cardigan that you know the, the top won't be going a bit too tight um, around so it'll be quite nice it just needs to get used to be worn to relax as well the fabric and it's pretty good I quite like it the sleeves are quite long it's a nice one I think Yes, yeah, so the main concern for this uh, sweater will be to um, to soften the fabric a little bit. I mean, I've blocked it uh, after soaking it in some uh, yarn soap. I've used soak, and then uh, after blocking, I even washed it in uh, in my um, my washing machine has a hand wash program, so I've put it in there, and uh, yeah, to try and to and to get rid of the smell. Actually, the spinning oil, the the, the yarn is not smelling. Uh, very nice um, yes uh, I didn't do so I didn't do any modification whatsoever uh, for this and uh, however I've uh, decided to try to do a stretchier bind off than the one I usually do thinking you know it might help with the fact that this yarn was a little bit stiff to knit with but uh, to be fair I don't know we'll, we'll see how it wears out but i don't think i need it to i have used just let me look at my uh, notes it was the lori's stretchy bind off um which is instead of you know knit and knit you know as per uh ribbing and then knit the two stitches together uh instead yes instead of moving the yarn back and forth you kind of like flip the needle uh around the yarn giving it a little bit of, of a more stretch i mean it looks clean enough but i don't think i really needed it um i think my uh whoever's my 
surprisingly stretchy cast off is it Judy's, Jenny's? I can't remember. Uh, it's. I mean, I managed this one fine and it just suits me uh, nicely. But, you know, I wanted to try. And if you don't try, you don't know what is good for you, what isn't good for you. Um, so, yeah, I suspect. Uh, so now we'll put this in the uh, wardrobe. Um, ready for uh, the uh, autumn and, uh, and winter time. Um, I do like... Uh, as much as I like knitting things and have wear them right away, like this shawl or, or other things, uh, I also do like knitting things in advance and then you stash them away and when you get to pull them out, it's like you're rediscovering something. And it's like it, the excitement is uh, it, it's quite high for me anyway to, to have this pile of clothes. I was like, oh, I get to wear them now. Yay! So I don't know how you feel. Tell me how you feel about that. Do you like to knit to wear them right away or do you like to plan in advance and like cast, you know, put them away and then uh, and then uh, get your first wear a few a few months after or something? How do you feel about that? Uh, that'll be fun to know what everybody think about this. I cast off my Ramona light and obviously I had to cast on another sweater and this is uh, the first sweater of what I've decided to call my Gru sweater collection. Gru for grey and blue. There's definitely a colour theme happening in my stash. Uh, with uh, including the one that I'm about to show you um, that I have started, including this one, there's four sweaters uh, that are grey and blue. A couple of those have another note of another colour, both yellow. I am so predictable. But hey, this is, this is my colour scheme and I love wearing those colours, so yeah, I'm, I'm not too fussed about that. But anyway, so the first uh, of my Gru sweaters, I've uh, decided to name them, is this crazy all over brioche baby here, uh, which I have started. This is the Cavalgante by um, Rosa Pomar, which uh, most of us will probably uh, know in the knitting world as the owner of uh, Retrosaria, Rosa Pomar in uh, Lisbon, and uh, who does the uh, Mondim yarn and other yarn, but the Mondim I think is the uh, most widely known, uh, the sock yarn. Actually, this sweater is designed with Mondim and with La Bienneme Mondim, this collaboration they did. Um, as you can see from this picture, it's sort of a fade all over a brioche sweater. Uh, I've decided to use yarn that's been in my stash for more or less time. Uh, that would go well together and just improvise the, the color flow of it. Uh, and, and you know, in which order the color um, was going to happen. Um, so yeah, so I'm at the stage where I've uh, separated the sleeves from the body. Um, this is my overall second brioche project. The first one uh, was a shawl, which is pretty much straightforward, it just has a section of brioche. Um, so brioche, for those who don't know what brioche is, um, is uh, it's, it's pretty much a one by one rib uh, where you throw some yarn overs to uh, make it a little bit uh, fluffier and bouncier. And if you do a two color brioche, this technique also allows to have a reversible fabric, a reversible rib. Um, so actually I'm knitting this one on the reverse side. That's That's my side when I'm knitting but I'm gonna be wearing it on this side and yes yeah, so um the yarns that I'm using so as I said I am using a few the, all the labels of the yarn I'm using don't know it's just sorry the light is playing up so I've got hello there you go. 
So there's quite a double page of labels. Uh, it is mostly black owl yarns. Um, so black owl yarns. Uh, Julie is uh, behind black owl yarn. So I'm looking for my. Oh, here we are. My swatch. <laughs> My swatch would be easier to hold than the sweater uh, to present you the colors. Um, so Julie, who is Black Isle Yarns, uh, so Black Isle is uh, north of this the region just north of Inverness in uh, in Scotland, and uh, she sources her yarn, the fleece uh, from her yarn to from uh, farms that are local to her, of many uh, very different breeds, and then she sends them to be spun. I believe at the border mills. Well, I can't remember exactly the name of the mill but it's down the borders I'm pretty sure uh, of Scottish borders so it's very local and, and um, you know close circuit uh, yarn and uh, then she gets the yarn back and then she dyes it with natural dyes um, so I have chosen the colors uh, so I've started the top of my sweater with this one here which is a crossbreed blend with Bluefest, Leicester, Cheviot, Lincoln and Hampshire. I'm sorry, I have to look because there's so many sheep spread, I can't remember them all. Uh, and this was dyed with hibiscus. And then the two blues um, are, so the, the darker blue, the old um, Cheviot uh, yarn, 100% Cheviot. And the darker blue is dyed with indigo and then the sort of greenish blue is um, is dyed with indigo, heather, gorse and rhubarb. And uh, yes, so obviously this got indigo. So currently this I'm on the portion when I've got the two indigo dyed yarn um, currently running in my sweater. I have blue hands when I need it. But this is what you expect when you uh, knit with indigo no matter you know it, it just happened it's not like a sign of uh, any sort of uh, bad quality of the yarn this is just what it is it's indigo you got to be prepared for it um so that's fine uh this is a very very nice yarn to knit with so uh yeah just be aware of probably you know what when you die, when you knit with indigo you end up with blue hands you know but you wash your hands it's gone you've got no more hands no more smurf look it's good all good so yeah so these are the three black alliance i'm uh, i'm gonna be knitting with i bought them last year at the leeds wool festival um because i've been looking at uh, her yarn for ages and that was the first event um where she was at that was as well and so uh so uh, i uh i enjoyed uh, buying this those three skeins i th took me a while to find what project i wanted to do with it uh but then maybe thinking it would do a nice sort of gradient sort of shawl or like you know bluish shawl but then i decided i wanted to do a sweater that's i decided i wanted to be a sweater when i've realized that it will go it was going very well with this Gray here, which is a, a yarn that my friend Jess brought me back from Oregon, uh, where she is from. And this yarn is a Romney Dorset, Rambouillet, and Jacob Churro. And uh, and yes, yeah, so I thought, oh, they're four colors, they, they look nice together. So I wanted to be a sweater, but then what sweater? I wasn't too sure. Did I want to do a color block? Did I want to do stripes? Did I... So many options. And then I picked myself on this sweater and then I thought, oh, I'm going to spice things up, throwing in this little mustardy yellow, which is from John Auburn Textiles. It's their, what used to be their Apaka Sock Yarn. I, I'm not too sure if they still do it or if they change the, the content on the yarn and, and the, the colors and things like that. I'm not sure they do them colors anyway. This was the mustard colorway. Um, I've had this in my stash for ages, years. Um, I bought the yarn just that shortly after Ginger Twist Studio opened in Edinburgh. So this is when I lived in Edinburgh still, maybe? So that's like six years ago or something it's ridiculous um but um but yes and i needed a, a shrug with the yarn i had more skins and that i still had this pretty much full skin or cake in my stash so 
see it's just it's totally worth to keep your stash for years and years you never know when it's going to come in handy to complement new or yarn and make a beautiful sweater out of it so and hopefully blue beautiful sweater it will be um so yeah i mean Brioche is not complicated when you get used to it, although it's um, there's a few new techniques for me, including uh, short rows on brioche, which I uh, somehow managed to wing quite nicely. I, 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 don't, I still don't understand how I managed to do it. I'm like, I think I ended up still with like two stitches short, which probably because I forgot to move my uh, beginning of front stitch marker when I did, when I started to knit flat uh, back and forth uh, and it just kind of threw me kind of like sideways and but I still managed to fall back on my feet up somehow and uh, the increases were okay as well it's pretty straightforward increasing on a brioche actually um, but yeah but, but somehow because I'm very much winging it in terms of what's happening and, and with you know with the colors now I need to make sure I've got enough of the colors for the sleeve as well to follow um, the body color pattern um, so it's totally improvisation and I'm still kind of like this little corner in my head thinking that something's going to go wrong I'm going to have to rip it all out time will tell at the moment I'm very much enjoying it although it's like I'm knitting two sweaters. Effectively, I am knitting two sweaters because every round you need to re you need to repeat t twice for each side and each color. So it's uh, it is time consuming, but it's uh, it, it is enjoyable, and uh, I am looking forward to uh, to have a brioche sweater, and uh, hopefully that will fit because my gauge is totally off. But that I'm reading on the Ravelry projects for this sweater I'm not the only one um, the the gauge um, was designed to be on the 3.75 millimeters needle I am nowhere near that my I'm knitting this on the three millimeter needles um, so yeah and uh, the, the swatch is fine um, and I'm guessing once I'm blocking up it, it'll stretch a bit from just the nature of brioche it's kind of like scrunched up and it will you know expand uh, I can make it expand as I block it uh, but yeah so uh, we'll see I, you know I mean I can't really try it on because these are not unchangeable needles uh, my three millimeters ones so I don't want and I don't want to do stitches on a brioche mm -mm. Mm -mm -mm. So uh, I'm powering through the body and uh, hopefully, hopefully it will fit. We'll, uh, I shall report back on that at uh, some other time. Another of my current uh, working progress, by all means, I'm not talking about all of them because I've got some uh, ones that are in a very long run. They're very sleepy at the moment, actually. Uh, so I'm not going to talk about those, but... Um, I, the, the one I'm about to show, I just, I just had to cast it on. It's just, you know, it was, you know, I had to. I had to. Yes, yes, I had to. So obviously, I never put in this in any stuffing in this uh, little lion's head for now. But this is, you probably uh, have seen it popping out on your Instagram feed if you're on Instagram. This is a, a rather popular pattern these days. This is the Winston Lane pattern. Winston Lane uh, is uh, sin uh, designed by From Cynthia uh, with Cynthia Valley, but From Cynthia uh, is her uh, rivalry and Instagram um, name. And um, she designed Winston Lane with my yarn, with Phileas yarns. Um, so I just, I just had to make myself my own uh, little shop sample and enjoy this knitting. I've already knitting the Bertel, which is our first pattern. It's a bear. And um, and yes, yeah, so uh, Bertel is getting a companion in the shape of uh, of Winston Leon. Um, I had made some kits uh, for the shop for Winston Leon. Uh, at the moment they, um, at the moment I'm filming this, they are out of stock. Uh, they've been 
super popular and I'm, I'm I'm very pleased uh well both for myself but also for Cynthia because that means there's a lot of little lions uh being born uh everywhere and um and yes yeah, so um the kids are currently out of stock but I've just been dying this morning some more of uh of, of the yarn so this should be hopefully by the time this goes out uh, I have some in the shop um, so the lion is a knit in Wanderlust 4 ply which is 100% blue fest Lester and this is the colorway La Cabana Suc and Winston comes with a little sweater which is knitted in the uh, Explorer Sock Heels and Toes, uh, which is a 20 gram mini skein uh, in the in my sock base, um, and the color is Among Friends. And actually, at the moment as well, Cynthia is working on a little add-on to the pattern in the shape of a little lioness called Nana Leon. Uh, which is knitted in the what colorway uh, so uh, there might be uh, another kit going on very soon as well if you wanted to do a lioness to go with the lion or lioness instead of the lion you know uh, whatever takes you fancy um, so yes yeah, so at the moment I'm not very far I'm nearly finished with the head which is probably the hardest bit due to the mane and uh, this is like a double loop sort of uh, stitch uh, which I must admit is a little bit fiddly uh, but uh, but you know we get there eventually I think maybe the, like the instruction tells you to use your thumb to uh, wrap the yarn over what I'm gonna say is just use any finger that is convenient for you to use uh, in order to also hold your needles and manage to knit with it uh, in my case it is my index finger uh, I can't you know yeah it's just not gonna work otherwise uh, but we managed so hopefully I'm nearly done with this uh, loop loop as it's called on this on the pattern um, nearly finished with the loop loop and uh, and it will be uh, quite easier afterwards I think <laughs> So I took my traveling whip with me uh, on, uh, I've not gone far um, this past few weeks, but uh, uh, you know, days out visiting friends or weekend visiting friends. So uh, my little uh, traveling whip has been following me. I cast on the front of the sweater on the train. I was going to Hull uh, where uh, I was meeting some friend it was uh, one of these friends and my friend Helen it was her birthday so we celebrated that in the pub make a wish. Yes, make a wish. <laughs> and then not long after that I went to visit my friend Martha in Glasgow so we spent a couple of uh, mornings uh having you know in our pajamas uh, staying in for a few hours under the blankets and uh, knitting away and talking and chatting as uh, knitting friends uh, will do who's in there uh the second sock drawer down more super socks by Winnie Bum. knit and nibble by james mcintosh 40 years of rowan and strange brew by tin can knit well, strange, strange brew. Strange brew, definitely. Uh, best knitting show slash event. Mm -hmm. okay. um, Yarndale. Knitting and stitching show. Oh, knitting and stitching show in Harrogate. And knitting and stitching show in Alexandra Palace. Uh, Wonderwall Wales and EYF. Ooh. That's a toughie. Well, I'll I be between Yarndale and EYF. Well, I actually haven't been to Yarndale. Oh, I love... Have you never? I've never been to Yarndale. No way. I, know. I was thinking maybe I should go this year. Oh, come this year. You can stay with me and you can be, you know, come with me. Yeah. 
Because oh, I'm going. Definitely. Yeah, that's a good idea. So what should we say then? Oh, I don't know. It's tough. Although, oh, I don't know. It's so different. Oh, I'll be too, a bit tempted to see Yarndale, though. It feels sure. like it's more local. It is a little bit, yeah, isn't it? Yeah. It's more sheepy as well. Isn't yes. It? Yeah, I was about to say, yeah, it's more, yeah. yeah. Like, that's what I really liked about Perth, was that it was such a sheep. Yeah, show. it's just a shame Perth isn't in there. I mean, you're so cute. All right, favorite charity cha charity campaign? And then uh, just uh, last weekend, weekend just gone, uh, I took my knitting to Scarborough with, again with my knitting pals uh, from this area. Um, we met uh, for our little knitting group and uh, we started knitting in the pub uh, where we had the lovely fish and chips. And then we took that uh, knitting and chatting and catching up to the seaside. Uh, where our friend Helen, actually the same Helen whose birthday it was in Hall the other day, uh, there's a little beach hut and uh, so it was like a, to me I've like ticked the box of uh, British lifestyle. I can drink my tea in a glass, it's okay. <laughs> And there we are, so I do have, on the right side's better, a back, and I've got half a front for my Hayward cardigan. Just a reminder of what this pattern is, is the, uh, it's not a cardigan, it's a sweater, what am I talking about? Uh, is the Hayward uh, sweater by Julie Hoover of a Brooklyn Tweed uh, collection BT12 I think I said last time I should have checked anyway I'm sure I'll be talking at length again as I knit it and probably when it's finally finished uh, I've got quite a bit of traveling to do in the uh, very near future so uh, I'll be uh, hopefully working a lot on that although I'm starting to miss sock to have on the go there might be there might be some uh, not so monogamous uh, knitting anymore on this one I'm out in bat and I might actually have to knit it at home as well uh, as it, all my other projects is to be a little bit complicated I could uh, I could well uh, start to knit it when I want some mindless knitting to start working on that even when I'm at home uh, and the yarn to uh, remind you is the John Arbonne Textile um, Harvest Hues in the Juniper colorway. In this episode's uh, Parley Vu Knitting section, I am going to talk about Sheep's Breed and in particular Bluefest Leicester. I find that uh, a lot of... Uh, People, especially the French uh, French people and uh, knitters, uh, think Bluefest Leicester is a very rustic yarn. And well, I don't like the word rustic to start with. It's um, you know, well, 
it can be applied to some yarn but definitely not the blue fest lester so i'm because i've been talking a lot especially with my hand dyed yarn and the uh, wanderlust dk and four ply and other uh yarn that i've been knitting with uh that are blue fest lester or uh involve include blue fest lester in their uh blend uh as i'll be talking about it blue fest lester is my absolute favorite yarn to knit with i'm so pleased that it is pretty much the UK is very hard to knit with it's there's a lot it's very widely spread uh, to find Bluefest Leicester um, just first of all your introduction oh sorry I've gone mute such a thing I shouldn't have on my iPad this is the lovely sheep that is Bluefest Leicester we do like it as you can see it's fleece is usually a bit creamy uh, it's not as white so um compared to merino yarn which is uh probably what uh, people uh think is the ultimate soft yarn yes it can be obviously uh, uh we well the, the industry measure yarn using microns uh the lesser microns the finer the yarn Yes, the Bluefest Lester will have a little bit more uh, micron than the Merino, but it's still very low in terms of uh, the general uh, sheep world and uh, knitting sheep and knitting wool um, whole thing. Uh, so yeah, the Merino is going to be a very fine, very soft and a very bouncy and a very round uh, yarn. Um, but the inconvenience is that it will, you know, it has its place and I like knitting with it, especially for shawls when it's just going to bloom and it's going to grow and it's wonderful. For garment, you need to be careful because, you know, it can grow so much and your garment is not going to fit you. Uh, and merino peels like mad usually unless it's a high twist in it or it's you know with uh some fiber or some nylon or something that would just hold the fiber together 100 percent merino on the jumper i've got some and you know, I actually bought an actual uh razor yarn razor thing shaver uh, just for my merino sweater because it's just crazy peeling uh and so yeah i found that it's not maybe you know i'm not sure if they will last as long as my other sweater and uh, blue fest luster so it's still got you know with uh is it 26 micron i think uh that's that's still very low in terms of uh of uh sheep and wool measurement and uh and yeah so it may be as less bouncy than the merino but what i think is uh got its strength is that it's uh, professor lester is a long wool and it's a luster wool uh so it does have this beautiful shine and because it's a long wool the fiber when spun together so the yarn is very sturdy because it just you know it just grips together and it's got this little halo which is absolutely lovely and it's actually very soft uh i've knitted many times with uh with blue fest lester and absolutely love it um it would for the fact that it's a uh, long wool i believe that it that's what makes it to like more sturdy in terms of it's hold its shape a little bit better uh much better than a merino in fact and uh and yet the adhesion of the fiber when you knit it with the stitch it when it it just uh the adhesion is much much better uh i've not known yet a problem with the peeling on the blue fest lester sweater except a little bit or a tiny bit of uh, of peeling and say like the armpits you know as you, like where very much you rub you know like but it, it's not just going to peel just you know just like that because there's nothing holding it together it holds perfectly well um the um it's absolutely perfect for any sort of stitch where it be lace it be cables it can do anything and even for color work because it's long wool and it's a little bit hairy uh it will even if it's super wash it will still be absolutely great for uh for color work 
although if you were to stick I would recommend that you stick on the um, on the sewing machine not the crochet I think it'll still be too it might be too soft to actually uh, do um, a crochet chain stick reinforcement I've not tried this is my, my guess I feel like uh, it's it well for that case it's actually not rustic enough there you go not rustic uh, is is woolly it is uh, hairy it's got a halo but it's not it's not rustic I, I don't know I'm gonna I'm gonna tell those French people it's not rustic it's a bad word air word bad word um so yeah so it's it's a proper wool as well which obviously in the uk is great because we like warm wool and we need uh you we need we need yarn that protects us from the weather the wind the rain and everything and Bluefest Lester does that uh and it's fabulous and i think in terms of um you know quality and price it's absolutely uh wonderful it's it's a very affordable yarn uh you know you get higher range but you'll you'll find uh 100 percent blue fest lester in like places like west yorkshire spinners and things like that they're absolutely wonderfully uh, affordable and uh and uh yes all round thumbs up for this and i believe that's uh, pretty much all i have to say uh, about my love for blue fest lester just so we round up of uh, the different quantities in my on in my opinion obviously uh, people may hate it and they be still too hairy for some other people and things like that but uh, I, I find it an absolute you know it is my absolute favorite to knit especially garments uh, it's very cozy and it just and it you know and it still uh, makes a beautiful sweater the only thing obviously compared to the merino to come back is that because it bounces less it's it will grow less when it's blocked like for example for this uh, shawl you probably uh, like the pattern is in merino so it's actually it looks much wider on the uh, well actually I could probably hard block it a little bit better but yeah because it grows less depending on the project you might you know it, it will it will react completely differently when soaked and uh, and stretched and things like that so on this shawl it may look a little bit thinner than uh, uh, on the um, on the pattern pictures but it's probably because of the quality of the yarn but I've got absolutely no problem with that I have sewn something for uh, um, a wedding uh, that was uh, earlier this month actually on the 1st of June. Um, I mean I've been wanting to make this dress for quite some time um, but um, but I thought this wedding, uh, this friend's wedding uh, was a good opportunity so I'm here to present it to you. Um, I shall tell you what it is first. I have sewed myself, I'm wearing it now but I shall stand up in a, in a minute to show you in, in, uh, in its full glory. Uh, it is the Merchant and Mills trapeze dress. Um, I have an old ver well, the original version of the trapeze pattern. I believe they have um, re-released it, uh, adding an option to have a, um, a button back. Uh, if it so, it is a bit better uh, in terms of uh, of different options that you can have. Uh, the, trapeze dress by Merchant and Mills is um, so it is a dress and you can have it as a tank dress or sleeve short sleeves or you can have um, longer sleeves with a little bit of a flare um, I usually even as a dress form I actually do it uh, shorter than what the pattern is uh, advising if you just bear with me because uh, I've got my little notes so um, I yes for the dress I actually take 10 centimeters 10 centimeters of the length which is about four inches uh, and I do also shorten it to make it as a t-shirt uh, as a top which I'm probably uh, will uh, show you at a later 
opportunity uh, as I'm planning actually to make a couple of uh, trapeze tops uh, for the summer whenever it arrives. So here we go. I'm going to stand up and I'll be talking to you more about it and the fabric and everything. Excuse me, chair. I wonder, maybe I need to, like this maybe, can you see it? Yes, there we are. Hi. So this fabric, crazy, crazy fabric, but amazing fabric, is from uh, Fabworks Mill Shop. Uh, they actually have a physical shop in Shrewsbury, uh, which I never got to. It's in Yorkshire, but I never got to it. Um, that is uh, one of the goals at some point uh, to visit the actual shop. But they have an amazing online shop as well. So. Um, and this fabric, it's a crepe de chine, uh, which they are, um, they called the uh, Jackson Pollock style crepe de chine. You can see <laughs> that is very Jackson Pollocky. Um, it is only six pounds a meter, which is very good value. It's very uh, large width. Well, I mean, it's in large width. It's uh, 150 centimeters uh, wide. Um, and uh, I actually only used maybe in length, maybe 1.5 up to 2 meters tops of, uh, of length for this uh, trapeze, uh, thanks to uh, the large width. So at 6 pounds a meter, it will come to, um, yeah, 12 pounds of fabric tops. Uh, the pattern itself, these days with the added option, as I mentioned earlier, is at £14.50 so it's not too bad uh, in terms of value I mean I found this pattern is I mean I've sewn about two dresses now and about is it two tops I've got two or three I can't remember and there's gonna be much more so it's definitely uh, you know I've made it uh, worthwhile so um, so as I mentioned I've done an alteration on length um, the other alterations that I've made um, will be on the hem. Usually it's just a, you know, folded hem on this particular dress. And I think it works very well with the crepe de chine is a bias hemming. Uh, it is uh, my favorite uh, way of hemming things in general and especially with like very fluid fabrics. Um, it is quite nice it just gives that little bit of weight and structure and it is the absolute laziest way to hem anything as well which I absolutely adore don't need to pin anything just you know just stitch follow the line fold fold with the iron and just stitch again then there you go bobs your ankle um, so yeah that was very good uh, for that the other and that is uh, the biggest alteration I well biggest is going to be becoming the biggest alteration I'll be making to this pattern is with the sleeves I have sewn a size 12 this is actually the size that fits me in terms of bust and, and everything else and um, the first dress version that I did uh, as a size 12 everything in size 12 was this one which is this uh, crazy wax fabric, uh, which I had bought in um, uh, Brixton in London, one of the fabric shop in Brixton, uh, and actually it was in Brixton Market, I'm pretty sure, this one. Um, and basically, the sleeves, it looks, it looks like it fits me, you know, it doesn't look like too small or anything, but the, the way the armholes and the sleeve fits onto this uh, hole, um, on this dress, I can't wear it the entire day, it actually cuts me um, 
around the uh, the arm especially yeah kind of like at the front you know if I, if I move too much it absolutely uh, it's actually quite painful uh, so I don't I do wear this one not so much uh, especially if it's gonna be in, a, in you know on a day that I know I'm be moving my arms quite a bit um, I think I wore it once at uh, a yarn show where I was vending and I had like actually red marks uh, all around my arms um, due to distress and the um, ill-fitting of the sleeves uh, for me anyway I mean you know uh, it's very hard I guess with any pattern uh, when you've got fitted sleeve um, everybody's got a different shape and everybody's shoulders sit differently um, so yeah it gets a bit tricky you know it's not because that they don't fit me so much the sleeves that uh, it will be the same for you or for somebody else um, so yeah so for this dress I was like wow if I do a size 12 sleeves and armholes that is a bit too tight so maybe I just you know recut just the bits that are a bit tight and go up to size 14 which is what I did uh, took my pattern and I just just recut the armhole to the size above and then I recut the sleeve pieces to a size 14 and it is slightly better but the other reason I think it is better is because this fabric is very is it, is it well, it's not really stretchy but it's not as stiff as this wax fabric uh, that's actually a pretty stiff uh, wax um, so yeah so obviously it fits better and I feel less constrained uh, but I can still feel that um, this is not perfect um, so I wore at the wedding it was fab and it's a great dress I absolutely love it and I'll be wearing it a lot I mean to be honest it, it is you know I can feel it a little bit but it's not you know it, it's okay I can definitely work with that uh, and I'm sure I'll be wearing it a lot during the summer because it's very light and it doesn't need ironing so I'll be throwing it in my bag wherever I go this summer on my travels um, yeah so I wore at the wedding it was fab loved it and it was very hot day as well so it was brilliant and then so I went to Glasgow as you saw uh, on the earlier um, on the knitting uh, part of uh, of this podcast I went to visit Martha my friend Martha who does sewing for a living she's a costume maker and she's an amazing uh, sewist uh, and she's worked for the opera television movies so she, she does amazing thing so um, I took this dress and I took all my pattern and pattern pieces with me uh, and uh, and Martha has absolutely been lovely and pretty much ended up refitting the whole thing um, for me uh, and uh, I've uh, managed to um, good friend of me she does all the work and I just film things but uh, yes so I am sharing a couple of videos of how we uh, spend this uh, couple of hours in the morning uh, trying to refit my trapeze so that it would fit me on the sleeves and um, disclaimer she asked me Martha asked me to do the disclaimer for you that uh, this is in the morning we've not showered or anything yet this is very much bad hair moment this is this is real bad hair realness um, so yeah, so let me share this uh, few images uh, of uh, Martha helping me with my trapeze uh, pattern and, uh, and I will show you uh, what I end up with.
this is what I end up with actually new pattern pieces so yes yeah, so Martha made a toile uh, as per pattern as I you know sewn this one and then uh, ripped the seam back and then did bits and bobs to uh, actually refit it and um, we thought it'd be just the sleeve to uh, alter but she ended up actually doing me a front and back so that the armholes uh, would be um, better fitting for me uh, it turns out that i've got very kind of like dropping shoulders which is probably why i like boxy sweaters so much because it just drops and uh feels like actually i probably have um, shoulders that kind of like bend forward naturally something like that so anyway um we ended up uh, doing this the and now so i've got obviously armholes that are actually gonna be uh well fitted I took some notes as well so I don't forget what I need to do with this uh, pattern pieces um, and uh, and yeah um, so now I'm, I'm, I have a very customized trapeze uh, pattern uh, so I shall try it on very soon on uh, doing some tops and uh, What's interesting as well, and that it's great, she actually gets me to do less sewing than before, is that we figured out, I mean, I don't have any issue with, uh, you know, putting it on. It's no zip at the back. It's, uh, it's straightforward, but there's a seam. It's a, it's a two-piece back, and there's a uh, back seam. Actually, uh, we realized that the seam allowance was, you know, if we actually I needed to gain on the seam allowance to uh, make it fit better so actually I have a front and back cut on the fold although I'll see depending on what fabric I'm using I might actually just uh, add the seam allowance to the back and still uh, you know just um, w widen it it's English I don't know uh, and you know to make it fit because sometimes when you cut two things on the fold it just you know you use uh, much more fabric than you would if you were cutting just the front on the fold and then the rest of it on the the rest of the fabric. So we'll see, but uh, theoretically I could just uh, cut everything on the fold, which is kind of nice and just, uh, you know, put the sleeves in and do the sides and the hem and the neckline and that's it. Um, so yeah, I believe that's everything I need to tell you about it. So. Uh, so yeah, basically with these pieces now, um, what I need to do is just put them on top of the patterns that I already have for the length of the top or dress. And then, you know, considering that I just need to add the seam allowance, just recut, recut the top of uh, these pieces. So I shall do that quite soon, maybe, you know, I mean quite soon. In terms of uh, my me and my sewing time, maybe maybe in a couple of months. But hey, what can you do? All right then, I think that's about it for the uh, sewing. So that's it for uh, today's podcast. I'm gonna leave you. Uh uh with this uh again thank you if you uh have been watching this till the end so i can say thank you thank you for watching me um you can uh like comment and subscribe to this channel if you enjoy what you've been uh, uh watching um i will see you in about a month time with some uh, other exciting things uh again it will look the, the the whole podcast will look completely different uh, because I'm, uh, I don't think I'll be much filming from this environment actually. There's uh, there's a lot of things going on and there are lots of places I need to go to uh, that I want to go to. So again, it'll be, uh, it'll be something different. Um, so yeah, thank you again. Uh, you can keep up to date uh, with what's going on on my social media, especially Instagram. Again, the, all the links are down below in the uh, notes. And uh, until we see each other again, um, enjoy your making.